Hello students, welcome to school study. In this video, we are going to learn about the structure of this cell. If you had not watched my introductory video about this cell, please tap on the link given in the description box and watch the video. So in this video, we will learn about the structure of this cell. All cells have three major functional regions. The cell membrane and cell wall, the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Let's study it one by one. So first is the cell membrane. The cell membrane is the outermost covering of the cell that separates the cell contents from the external environment. It is present both in plants and animal cells. Electron microscope is required to observe the cell membrane in the cells clearly. As you can see in this image, the outermost covering of the cell is nothing but a cell membrane. So, it is separating the contents of the cell from the external environment. It is present both in plants and animal cell but it is the outermost covering of only the animal cell not of the plant cell. In compound microscope the cell membrane merely appears like a line. So for observing the cell membrane structure clearly electron microscope is required. Next is the structure of the cell membrane. It is living, thin, delicate, elastic and selectively permeable membrane. What is selectively permeable membrane? We will read it later in this video. It is made up of phospholipids, protein, cholesterol and polysaccharides. There were different theories that were given by scientists about the structure of the plasma membrane. But the most accepted theory is the fluid mosaic model. The fluid mosaic model is a model suggested by Singer and Nicholson in 1972. It was suggested to explain the ultra structure of plasma membrane. According to them, plasma membrane is made up of two molecule thick layers of phospholipids. So, according to the fluid mosaic model, the plasma membrane is made up of two molecule. Okay, in this figure you are observing two molecule thick layer of phospholipids. So, let's see what is that term. The two types of protein molecules are intrinsic proteins which completely covers the lipid bilayer and extrinsic protein which occur either on the outer surface or on the inner surface. It is described as number of protein icebergs floating in the sea of lipids. So now we will study about the selective permeability of the plasma membrane. So selective permeability means the ability of plasma membrane that allows free passage of some selective gases and molecules. As you can see here, the plasma membrane, this is the plasma membrane and it is allowing only selective molecules, not all the molecules but only some selective molecules to move inward and only some selective molecules to move outward of the cell. So this is the selective permeability of the plasma membrane. There are two basic physical activities that are performed by plasma membrane 
for intake of some substances. First is diffusion and second is osmosis. Let's study about this one by one. So first is the diffusion. Diffusion is the process where molecules of a material move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until uniform concentration is finally achieved. Some common examples of diffusion are So first, let's observe the first example, spreading of incense stick fragrance. If you light an incense stick at one corner of the room, the fragrance of incense stick slowly slowly spreads in the whole room. So, this is an example of diffusion. Second is spreading of copper sulfate in water. These all things happen because of diffusion. Now let's see how diffusion takes place in cell. Something similar like in sense stick, diffusion happens in cells also. For example, in animal cell, the concentration of CO2 inside the cell is higher than outside the cell. As soon as there is difference in concentration inside and outside the cell, CO2 moves out of the cell. Similarly, the concentration of O2 outside the cell is higher than inside the cell, so oxygen enter the cell. This all happens because of diffusion. So, as you can see here, the molecules of oxygen are moving inside the cell because there are no molecules of oxygen or very less molecules of oxygen. So, the molecules of oxygen are moving inside. Whereas, there are few molecules of carbon dioxide here. So, the carbon dioxide molecule will move outside the cell until there will be equal amount of carbon dioxide molecule and oxygen molecule this side also in outer environment also and on the inner environment also. So this is example of diffusion in cells. Next is the osmosis. The movement of water molecules from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration through selectively permeable membrane is called as osmosis. So, here you can observe that the molecules of water inside the cell is low, whereas the molecules of water outside the cell is high. So, the molecules are moving inside the cell through the plasma membrane or through the selectively permeable membrane. This process is nothing but osmosis. This all happens because of osmosis. So, during osmosis, one of the three things could happen. First will be a hypertonic solution. Second will be a hypotonic solution. And third will be a isotonic solution. So, let's see what are these solutions. So, first is the hypertonic solution. The solution in which the concentration of solute is higher than the solvent. So, water comes out of the cell. Next is the isotonic solution. The solution in which the concentration of solute and solvent is same, so water will move around the cell. And the third one is hypotonic solution. The solution in which the concentration of solute is lower than solvent, 
so water will move into the cell now observe here this is a hypertonic solution in this solution the solute it means here solute is the cell so the concentration of the cell is higher whereas the concentration of the water is low so what is happening the water from the cell is getting out second is the isotonic solution here the concentration of solute it means that the concentration of the cell and the concentration of the water is same so the water is floating around the cell whereas in third the hypotonic solution the concentration of solute is low whereas the concentration of liquid is high so what is happening the water is coming inside the cell and the cell get swell up next is the mediated transport the passage of glucose amino acid and other polar molecule through cell membrane by special protein called permeases is called mediated transport permeases form a small passageway through the membrane enabling the solute molecule to cross the phospholipid layer there are two types of mediated transport first is the active transport and second is the passive transport so let's study about the active transport active transport is the movement of dissolved molecules into or out of a cell through the cell membrane from a region of lower concentration to a region of the higher concentration so in this figure you are observing that the molecules are moving inside the cell through the active transport next is the facilitated or next is the facilitated or passive transport it is the passive movement of molecules along the concentration gradient it is the selective process as the membrane allows only selective things to pass through them so passive transport is a selective process you can observe here that it is allowing only the selective substance to pass inside not all the substance are passing some selective substance are passing inside the cell and some selective substance is getting out of the cell so this is the passive transport now let's read about the function of cell membrane or plasma membrane plasma membrane defines the boundary of the cell and regulates the flow of materials into and out of the cell it separates cells from one another it separates the contents of the cell from the surrounding medium next is the cell wall in plant cell an additional covering is present outside the plasma membrane called as the cell wall it is non living and rigid it is secreted by plant cells itself for protection of plants it is made up of white fibrous polysaccharide called cellulose it is made for protecting the plasma membrane so in this figure the the green part of the plant cell is nothing but a cell wall which protects the cell the plant cell from the external environment it is non living and very rigid it's not delicate it's very rigid and it is made up of 
a white fibrous polysaccharide called as the cellulose. It also acts as a framework for protecting the plasma membrane of the plant cell. The functions of cell wall are it determines the shape of the cell. It basically determines the it determines the shape of the cell. So how the cell will look like it is determined by cell wall only. It protects the contents of cell from the external environment. It provides strength to the cell. It also provides turgidity to the cell. So these are some of the basic functions of the cell wall. Next is the nucleus. The nucleus is the large centrally located spherical and membrane bond structure present in the cell. It is known as the brain of the cell because it is the control center of all activities that take place inside the cell. It is surrounded by the cytoplasm. So, the shape of the nucleus is something like circle and it is a membrane bond structure. It means that it contains a membrane which protects the nucleus and also separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. The nucleus is known as the brain of the cell because it is the control center of all the activities, various type of activities that took place inside the cell. So, nucleus consists of nuclear membrane. It separates the nucleus from cytoplasm. Inside the nucleus, there is a jelly-like substance found in called as nucleoplasm. Inside the nucleus, a densely stained spherical, inside the nucleus, a densely stained structure is found called as nucleolus. It is known as the factory of ribosomes. Ribosomes help in protein synthesis. Inside the nucleus, thread-like structure is found called as the chromosomes. So, let's try to label all these parts of nucleus in this image. So, the outermost covering which you are seeing is the cell membrane of the nucleus. The inner part which you are observing is like jelly-like substance. It contains jelly-like substance. This is the nucleoplasm. Inside the cell, the densely stained, the spherical structure which is found inside the cell is just like a film of nucleus, is the nucleolus. Whereas the thread-like structure which you are seeing here is the chromosomes. So these are the parts of the nucleus. Now let's learn about one of the important parts of the nucleus, the chromosomes. Chromosomes contain information for inheritance of characters from parents to next generation in the form of DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid molecules. Chromosomes are compound of DNA and protein. So, the main function of chromosome is to transmit characters from both the parents 
to the offspring through a genetic material called as the DNA. The nucleus is made up of DNA and protein. The structure of the DNA molecule is like a curved ladder. So this is the DNA and it's just like a curved ladder. A molecule of DNA is made up of four different objects called as nucleotides. So let's study about the structure of chromosomes. Most chromosomes consist of two arms that extend from specialized region of DNA called centrosomes. So this is the centrosome of a chromosome. The chromosome terminal in either side is called as tolomerus. The terminal in either side of the chromosome is a tolomerus. This is the tolomerus of chromosome. Now let's study about the chromatids. Before cell division, cell duplicates its chromosomes also. Look at this picture. The two copies of chromosome remain attached to each other at their centrosome. This is the centrosome. As long as two copies of chromosomes are attached, they are called sister chromosome. Now it can be called as the sister chromosome. The chromatids are identical to each other. These two are identical to each other. During cell division, both chromosomes divide and become independent daughter chromosome. And by this, the division of chromosomes happen. Now, let's see the diploid and haploid number of chromosomes. Every eukaryotic species have fixed number of chromosomes. The number of chromosomes varied from 2 to 100 in different species. In human beings, there are 46 chromosomes. There is always a paired chromosome. The paired condition of chromosome is called diploid. And a cell which has pair of chromosomes is called as diploid cells. For example, humans. Humans have paired chromosome. Humans contain 23 pairs of chromosome. Whereas the unpaired condition of chromosomes is called haploid. And a cell which has half number of chromosomes is called as haploid cells. So, in diploid cell, there is two copies of each chromosome. Whereas, in haploid cell, there is only one copy of each chromosome, not two copies of the chromosome. Now, let's study about the functions of the chromosome. Chromosomes are essential for the process of cell division, replication, division and creation of daughter cells. It controls all metabolic activities of cell. It helps in transmitting characters from parents to offspring. Nucleolus produce ribosomes and are known as protein factory. Next is the cytoplasm. It is a jelly-like substance that occupies space between cell membrane and the nucleus. The inner granular mass of cytoplasm is called as endoplasm, while the outer glassy layer is called ectoplasm. All chemical reactions and functions of cell take place in cytoplasm. 
साइटोप्लाज्म कंसिस्ट ऑफ साइटोसोल एंड सेल ऑर्गेनल्स सो साइटोप्लाज्म इज द जेली लाइक सब्सटेंस प्रेजेंट इन द सेल द इनर ग्रैनुलर मास द ग्रीन टाइप ऑफ मास इनर इन इनर साइट इज कॉल्ड एज इंडोप्लाज्म वेयर एज द आउटर ग्लासी लेयर इज कॉल्ड एज द एक्टोप्लाज्म All chemical reactions and functions of the cell take place in the cytoplasm as it contains various of organelles. It consists of cytosol and cell organelles. Let's see cytosol and cell organelles one by one. So first is the cytosol. Cytosol is the water-based substance in which proteins organelles and other structures flow it forms the ground material for cytoplasm and cell organelles it can only be observed under a microscope it is always in state of movement it acts as a store for essential chemicals in body such as amino acid ions and glucose so the fluid like structure or the moving structure which you observe in the cytoplasm is nothing but cytosol it can only be observed under a microscope it's just like the water moves in the sea see something same to that the cytosol moves in the next is the cell organelles just as different parts of the body perform different functions similarly the structure inside the cell performs specific function hence these structures are called organelle for example mitochondria or nematodes are called the power house of cell because it produces most of the chemical energy of the cell the organelles of the cells are in the plasmic reticulum ribosomes golgi apparatus or golgi body lysosomes mitochondria plastids chloroplast vacuoles peroxisomes and centrosomes In the next video we are going to discuss about cell organelles in details. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon.